Hey, 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 what's going on guys? Dr. Corey Hoffner here, Dr. Physical Therapy as well as from the Conditioning Specialist. And I'm helping you get rid of your lower back pain for this month of April. It is our new series on disc herniations and disc bulges. So if you have not seen our previous video to this one, go back and watch it. Because we talked about the difference between what a disc bulge is versus a herniation, why one is worse than the other, and why the jelly donut analogy just really isn't typically being used or referred to anymore because it doesn't really fit the mold. Right? We found more research, we found that it was really kind of strong, more ring-like structure of the discs um, that don't really refer to like a jelly like texture okay so go back and watch that that's your starting video if you don't watch that you have no context and this one's not going to make too much sense all right so promise me you'll do that so getting into tonight's topic we're going to talk about how to stop suffering in silence and how to truly identify if you have a disc bulge or you have a disc herniation in terms of symptoms and then next week we're going to cover how to screen it properly and how, what tests you need to do to kind of see okay so three things we're going to talk about in detail how to identify a disc bulge how to identify a disc herniation, and then what to do about it. Those are the three kind of biggies that we want to hit on the head, um, and that'll be our goal for you to give you better understanding of what's going on um, and give you some background based on week one's kind of video. All right, so typically a disc bulge and a herniation can occur when there's a combination of load and movement, and it, it's usually when an athlete allows their back to kind of move excessively when they're deadlifting. Right? Usually it allows their, they allow their lumbar spine to kind of round a little bit too much excessively at the bottom of a squat as well. That's referred to as a butt wink. And guys, you got to keep in mind that if, if you had a ball and socket joint of your hip, um, right? If, if that was the same way the spine was structured, that wouldn't be an issue if you were rounding excessively. But because the spine is structured different than the hip and other ball and socket joints, right? That rounding can become really painful or become damaging over time. And I don't mean if you're doing air squats. Like if you're doing air squats and you get a butt wink on occasion, that's completely normal. If you're a gymnast and you have really resilient joints and tons of flexibility, then you're probably fine too. So it, there's a lot of other factors that go into play. It's not just like, oh, you need, you need to be nervous about rounding your spine because if you keep rounding, it's gonna be painful. But if you're overly loading, like you're doing like three to 500 pound deadlifts or body um, barbell back squats, excuse me, and you're getting a lot of pain or discomfort and you're rounding excessively with a butt wink or you're you're rounding when you're picking up that weight at the bottom of the deadlift you probably want to take it easy kind of get your spine assessed by a physical therapist maybe get an MRI which we're going to talk about in a second um, because usually repeated flexion or your spine getting rounded like in the cat exercise of the cat cow or cat camel um, that over time if you keep rounding it that's how you typically damage your discs and how they get pushed and sequestered backwards right so they start bulging like we talked about last week then they become herniated where we talked about like that jelly like coming out of the disc where that can push into the nerves we're going to talk about how to differentiate between that herniation and, um, and bulging in terms of symptoms okay so repeated flexion, right? Like bending over, letting it round um, repeatedly. Um, sometimes sitting slumped like this with your butt forward, like in a nice comfortable leather couch, right? Or when you're driving for too long, that can put a lot of pressure on the discs and put you into more flexion. Um, deadlifting with a rounded spine, right? And the most common areas that are targeted are L4, L5, and L5, S1. And that's a directly kind of bottom chain of the lumbar spine, right? Where you hit the tailbone or the sacrum. And that's why it's called S1. S stands for sacrum, okay? so. Um, typically, you know, what do you do about it? You want to just be careful. Like I said, um, you don't have to be scared of rounding your spine. It's completely fine. You just got to make sure you engage those muscles around your spine to protect it. So engaging your serratus anterior, pulling your lats down and in, keeping your core sucked in, your transverse abdominis and your rectus abdominis working. If you stabilize all those strong supportive trunk muscles, then you don't have to really worry about your back getting hurt. So it's super important. Form is key when you're doing certain things, even when you're picking things up. You don't have to be deadlifting, guys. You can be maybe changing a tire on your car. Good form is so essential to everything you do in life. That's why it's really important to kind of match up with a physical therapist or a good doctor who knows what they're talking about. So how do we identify a disc bulge? Let's start with that. Really, you, typically it's muscle pain first if you have a disc bulge. If that bulge, uh, bulge just means it's not kind of fully pushed out like a herniation, it's pushed out a little bit, kind of back going this way. Um, that disc is kind of sequestered a little bit, not quite herniated yet. Um, there could be muscle pain a lot of times. So what happens is, um, you know, you could typically get a little bit of a cascade. So inflammation starts first, then you get a cascade of the muscles getting really tender to the touch. Um, and a lot of times they get like really kind of, if you palpate them, they might hurt a little bit. And it's just like a kind of reactive mechanism to that inflammation around that area. So it's right around the site of the injury. So usually um, doctors will refer to it as a muscle sprain or a muscle strain. 
Okay, so you usually see that on your diagnosis codes, like if you get a script from your doctor to go to physical therapy. Um, so the, sometimes those muscles tend to spasm because of that inflammation, um, and then sometimes it becomes hard to activate them. So you gotta give it time to recover and rest for a couple days. Um, how do you identify disc herniation, you ask? That's a little bit different. Typically, there's nerve pain associated with that. So forget about the muscle pain. There could be a little bit of muscle pain as well. You could have a combination of muscle and nerve pain with a herniation, but usually they're stinging, burning, there's tingling, there's even numbness down the thighs a lot of times. You could have pain shooting across your back from left to right, right to left, um, or that pain could start at your lower back and shoot into your butt and down your thighs into the bottom of your foot or the top of your foot, right? Depends on what area is affected. Most commonly it's behind your thighs and your hamstrings, down your knees, and then at the bottom of the feet, sometimes in the big toe, because that's L4, L5, L5, S1 area. But if it's the higher end of the lumbar spine, that could affect the front of the thighs and even the front of the feet. Um, so you gotta just be careful and you don't actually know until you get a good diagnosis from a doctor or a physical therapist doing special tests and then doing an MRI to see exactly what's going on. Okay, so a spinal cord, right, is like a major highway. Keep that in mind. Um, you know, every highway, if you've been ever, if you should have been on a highway if you drive, right, every highway has little exits where you get off like little exit ramps. Your, your spine's the same way. Picture the highway as the kind of spinal canal coming down from your head to your butt, right, and then it stops. Off of the side are the little nerves that branch off. Those are like the exits of the highway. So those little nerves branch off and they go all the way down into the legs. And the sciatic nerve is the big kind of portal nerve, right? And then it branches off into little sectors. So you, if you have any like of those symptoms I just mentioned, you most likely have some type of sciatica. Um, and then that's a more, more serious issue where you should see the doctor right away. Okay, so this brings us to our next um, kind of thing to talk about is like, what do we do about it? Right? The MRI is the gold standard. So sometimes it's hard to get an MRI, especially in the United States if you live here like me. Um, typically the insurance companies will wanna see you go through four to six weeks of physical therapy, have you try some medications. Some of those medications can include an oral um, kind of prednisone taper, which is steroids. Sometimes that helps decrease inflammation locally and helps you kind of taper down and tolerate more exercise. Sometimes they want you to get an um, kind of injection, right? Like a cortisone injection. Sometimes that helps, especially if it's localized to that area. Uh, if you do four to six weeks of therapy, you're taking the meds, you see no relief or it gets worse, then boom, you're gonna be accepted or approved for an MRI, right? An MRI is gonna show you that soft tissue and it's gonna show you if it's herniated truly and how much it's herniated into the disc or if there's a little bit of bulge forming. Okay, so that'll give the doctor a good idea. But keep in mind, this is not the only thing you should use to dictate your treatment like we talked about last week, right? You don't know if that just happened or if it happened 10 years ago. Okay, there's no way for doctors to truly tell if a herniation is fresh or if it's really old. So keep that in mind, super, super important. Um, but one thing I will say is after you go through that, so you get the MRI, right, you do the kind of uh, medications. If, if you don't want to, that's completely fine too. You can take Advil if, or you can use like topical creams like Tiger Balm, um, Bengay, right, Voltaren gel, all those things help. Or you can do stim to taper symptoms. Um, I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. I can talk about that all day. Um, then you do PT for four to six weeks. You wanna make sure you're also changing positions frequently. You're adding in a lot of walking because walking helps kind of with that spine, open it up, get blood flow to it because sometimes the spine hates to stay stagnant for too long. I shouldn't say sometimes all the time. It hates to stay locked in one position. So change positions every couple hours. Like I said, walk a good one to two times a day, even if it's five or 10 minutes. It could be on flat ground or a track-like surface where it's rubber and soft. Um, and then you need to make sure you're also doing a good amount of exercises, right? So do what you can tolerate and spend more time in positions that your body likes. Right? I'm not saying spend all your time there. You should spend time in all different positions, but um, try and avoid those kind of discomforting positions. I have all my clients create an activity log typically when I start with them the first week we work together. Keep an activity log for yourself, right? Make a column that says the activity, make a column that says the time that you were doing the activity, make a column of your symptoms, right? Like how long did your symptoms last? What were they like? Was it painful? Was it muscle aching? Was it deep pain? Was it numbness and tingling? That's gonna help give you a better idea of what you should avoid and what you should move into. Okay, um, so that's really it for tonight. Nice quick one, nice easy, right? How to identify disc bulge, right? Typically it's gonna be more muscle pain related. A disc herniation is gonna be more kind of nerve pain related. And then what to do about it, right? We talked about getting an MRI, maybe doing met oral medication or a cortisone injection, and then going to PT for four to six weeks, getting reassessed regularly, and then making a decision what you wanna do next um, compared to what your PT is telling you and what your doctor is telling you. 
right? So thank you guys so much for supporting us as we continue to grow um, with our Instagram, our Facebook group, as well as our new YouTube channel here. Uh, if you guys want to be accepted, we are still taking people for free 10 minute discovery calls. If you're looking for help um, and you want some kind of help kind of fixing out your back issues, you don't know what's going on. Maybe your back kind of gets better, then it gets worse and you keep following that premise. Let me answer some questions for you, break some things down. These calls are free, they're 10 minutes in total. Um, if you're interested in that, you can comment down below. Just comment call, C-A-L-L, -L, and we'll get you set up for one of those calls. Um, and then stay tuned for next week, guys. Next week's probably gonna be our biggest and best video for this month. We're gonna go through all the screening tests that you need to do in order to see if you have a disc bulge or a herniation. And then this is gonna dictate how you properly treat it, which is gonna come in our video in two weeks from now. Okay, so two more videos, two awesome ones coming up. If you guys have any questions as well, feel free to link them down below in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day.